nitrocellulose, also known as cellulose nitrate, flash paper, flash cotton, gun cotton, and flash string, is a highly flammable compound formed by nitrating cellulose through exposure to nitric acid or another powerful nitrating agent. When used as a propellant or low-order explosive, it was originally known as gun cotton. Partially nitrate cellulose has found uses as a plastic film and in inks and wood coatings. In 1862 the first man-made plastic, nitrocellulose, branded Park Sign, was created by Alexander Parks from cellulose treated with nitric acid and a solvent. In 1868, American inventor John Wesley Hyatt developed a plastic material he named celluloid, improving on Parks' invention by plasticizing the nitrocellulose with camphor so that it could be processed into finished form and used as a photographic film. Celluloid was used by Kodak, and other suppliers, from the late 1880s as a film base in photography, X-ray films, and motion picture films, and was known as nitrate film. After numerous fires caused by unstable nitrate films, safety film, cellulose acetate film, started to be used from the 1930s in the case of X-ray stock and from 1948 for motion picture film. Uses Munitions Henri Braconnot discovered in 1832 that nitric acid, when combined with starch or wood fibers, would produce a lightweight combustible explosive material, which he named xyloidin. A few years later in 1838, another French chemist, Théophile Jules Pelouse, teacher of Escanio Sobrero and Alfred Nobel, treated paper and cardboard in the same way. Jean-Baptiste Dumas obtained a similar material which he called nitromidine. These substances were highly unstable and were not practical explosives. However, around 1846 Christian Friedrich Skonbian, a German-Swiss chemist, discovered a more practical solution. As he was working in the kitchen of his home in Basel, he spilled a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid on the kitchen table. He reached for the nearest cloth, a cotton apron, and wiped it up. He hung the apron on the stove door to dry, and, as soon as it was dry, there was a flash as the apron ignited. His preparation method was the first to be widely imitated one part of fine cotton wool to be immersed in 15 parts of an equal blend of sulfuric and nitric acids. After two minutes, the cotton was removed and washed in cold water to set the esterification level and remove all acid residue. It was then slowly dried at a temperature below 40 degrees Celsius about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Skonbian collaborated with the Frankfurt professor Rudolf Christian Botger, who had discovered the process independently in the same year. By coincidence, a third chemist, the Brunswick professor F.J. Otto had also produced gun cotton in 1846 and was the first to publish the process, much to the disappointment of Skonbian and Botger. The sulfuric acid is present as a catalyst to produce the nitronium ion, no plus. 2. The reaction is first order and proceeds by electrophilic substitution at the CO centers of the cellulose. Gun cotton is made by treating cotton, used as the source of cellulose, with concentrated sulfuric acid and 70% nitric acid cooled to 0 degrees Celsius to produce cellulose trinitrate. While gun cotton is dangerous to store, the hazards it presents can be reduced by storing it dampened with various liquids such as alcohol. For this reason, accounts of gun cotton usage dating from the early 20th century refer to wet gun cotton. The power of gun cotton made it suitable for blasting. As a projectile driver, it had around six times the gas generation of an equal volume of black powder and produced less smoke and less heating. The patent rights for the manufacture of gun cotton were obtained by John Hall and Son in 1846, an industrial manufacture of the explosive began at a purpose-built factory at Marsh Works in Faversham, Kent, a year later. However, the manufacturing process was not properly understood and few safety measures were put in place. A serious explosion in July of that year killed almost two dozen workers, resulting in the immediate closure of the plant. Gun cotton manufacture ceased for over 15 years until a safer procedure could be developed. Further research indicated the importance of very careful washing of the acidified cotton. 
Unwashed nitrocellulose, sometimes called pyrocellulose, may spontaneously ignite and explode at room temperature, as the evaporation of water results in the concentration of unreacted acid. The British chemist Frederick Augustus Abel developed the first safe process for gun cotton manufacture, which he patented in 1865. The washing and drying times of the nitrocellulose were both extended to 48 hours and repeated eight times over. The acid mixture was changed to two parts sulfuric acid to one part nitric. Nitration can be controlled by adjusting acid concentrations and reaction temperature. Nitrocellulose is soluble in a mixture of alcohol and ether until nitrogen concentration exceeds 12%. Soluble nitrocellulose, or a solution thereof, is sometimes called collodion. Gun cotton containing more than 13% nitrogen, sometimes called insoluble nitrocellulose, was prepared by prolonged exposure to hot, concentrated acids for limited use as a blasting explosive or for warheads of underwater weapons such as naval mines and torpedoes. Safe and sustained production of gun cotton began at the Waltham Abbey Royal Gunpowder Mills in the 1860s, and the material rapidly became the dominant explosive becoming the standard for military warheads, although it remained too potent to be used as a propellant. More stable and slower burning collodion mixtures were eventually prepared using less concentrated acids at lower temperatures for smokeless powder in firearms. The first practical smokeless powder made from nitrocellulose, for firearms and artillery ammunition, was invented by French chemist Paul Vie in 1884. Jules Verne viewed the development of gun cotton with optimism. He referred to the substance several times in his novels. His adventurers carried firearms employing this substance. The most noteworthy reference is in his From the Earth to the Moon, in which gun cotton was used to launch a projectile into space. Film On May 2, 1887, Hannibal Goodwin filed a patent for a photographic pellicle and process of producing same especially in connection with roller cameras, but the patent was not granted until September 13, 1898. In the meantime, George Eastman had already started production of roll film using his own process. Nitrocellulose was used as the first flexible film base, beginning with Eastman Kodak products in August, 1889. Camphor is used as a plasticizer for nitrocellulose film, often called nitrate film. Goodwin's patent was sold to ANSCO, which successfully sued Eastman Kodak for infringement of the patent and was awarded $5 million in 1914 to Goodwin Film. Nitrate film was used for X-ray photography for some time, where its flammability hazard was most acute, and thus in 1933, became disused for such purposes, along with its uses for motion picture films in 1951, where it was replaced by safety film with an acetate base. Nitrocellulose X-ray film ignition was the cause behind the Cleveland Clinic fire of 1929 in Cleveland, Ohio, which claimed the lives of 123 people during the fire, and a number who were rescued but died several days later due to inhalation of the toxic smoke. The use of nitrocellulose film for motion pictures led to the requirement for fireproof projection rooms with wall coverings made of asbestos. A training film for projectionists included footage of a controlled ignition of a reel of nitrate film, which continued to burn when fully submerged in water. Unlike many other flammable materials, nitrocellulose does not need air to keep burning, as the reaction produces oxygen similar to a thermite reaction. Once burning, it is extremely difficult to extinguish. Immersing burning film in water may not extinguish it, and could actually increase the amount of smoke produced. Owing to public safety precautions, the London Underground forbade transport of movies on its system until well past the introduction of safety film. Cinema fires caused by ignition of nitrocellulose film stock were the cause of the 1926 Dromkali Her Cinema tragedy in County Limerick in which 48 people died and the 1929 Glen Cinema disaster in Paisley, Scotland, which killed 69 children. Today, Nitrate film projection is normally highly regulated and requires extensive precautionary measures including extra projectionist health and safety training. Projectors certified to run nitrate films have many precautions, 
among them the chambering of the feet and take up reels and thick metal covers with small slits to allow the film to run through. The projector is modified to accommodate several fire extinguishers with nozzles aimed at the film gate. The extinguishers automatically trigger if a piece of flammable fabric placed near the gate starts to burn. While this triggering would likely damage or destroy a significant portion of the projection components, it would prevent a fire which could cause far greater damage. Projection rooms may be required to have automatic metal covers for the projection windows, preventing the spread of fire to the auditorium. The Dryden Theatre at the George Eastman Museum is one of a few theatres in the world that is capable of safely projecting nitrate films, and regularly screens films to the public. Nitrocellulose was found to gradually decompose, releasing nitric acid and further catalyzing the decomposition, eventually into a flammable powder. Decades later, Storage at low temperatures was discovered as a means of delaying these reactions indefinitely. The great majority of films produced during the early 20th century are thought to have been lost either through this accelerating, self-catalyzed disintegration or through studio warehouse fires. Salvaging old films is a major problem for film archivists, see Film Preservation. Nitrocellulose film base manufactured by Kodak can be identified by the presence of the word nitrate in dark letters along one edge, the word only in clear letters on a dark background indicates derivation from a nitrate base original negative or projection print, but the film in hand itself may be a later print or copy negative, made on safety film. Acetate film manufactured during the era when nitrate films were still in use was marked safety or safety film along one edge in dark letters. 8, 9.5, and 16 mm film stocks, intended for amateur and other non-theatrical use, were never manufactured with a nitrate base in the West, but rumors exist of 16 mm nitrate film having been produced in the former Soviet Union and slash or China. Cellulose is treated with sulfuric acid and potassium nitrate to give cellulose mononitrate. This was used commercially as celluloid a highly flammable plastic used in the first half of the 20th century for lacquers and photographic film. Nitrate dominated the market for professional use 35mm motion picture film from the industry's origins to the early 1950s. While cellulose acetate-based so-called safety film, notably cellulose diacetate and cellulose acetate propionate, was produced in the gauge for small-scale use in niche applications, such as printing advertisements and other short films to enable them to be sent through the mails without the need for fire safety precautions, the early generations of safety film base had two major disadvantages relative to nitrate, it was much more expensive to manufacture, and considerably less durable in repeated projection. The cost of the safety precautions associated with the use of nitrate was significantly lower than the cost of using any of the safety bases available before 1948. These drawbacks were eventually overcome with the launch of cellulose triacetate base film by Eastman Kodak in 1948. Cellulose triacetate superseded nitrate as the film industry's mainstay base very quickly. While Kodak had discontinued some nitrate film stocks earlier, they stopped producing various nitrate roll films in 1950 and ceased production of nitrate 35mm motion picture film in 1951. The crucial advantage cellulose triacetate had over nitrate was that it was no more of a fire risk than paper, the stock is often erroneously referred to as non-flam, this is not true it is combustible, but not in as volatile or as dangerous a way as nitrate, while it almost matched the cost and durability of nitrate. It remained in almost exclusive use in all film gauges until the 1980s when polyester slash pet film began to supersede it for intermediate and release printing. Polyester is much more resistant to polymer degradation than either nitrate or triacetate. Although triacetate does not decompose in as dangerous a way as nitrate does, it is still subject to a process known as deacetylation, often nicknamed vinegar syndrome, due to the acetic acid smell of decomposing film, by archivists, which causes the film to shrink, deform, become brittle and eventually unusable. PET, like cellulose mononitrate, is less prone to stretching than other available plastics. By the late 1990s, polyester had almost entirely superseded triacetate for the production of intermediate elements and release prints. 
triacetate remains in use for most camera negative stocks because it can be invisibly spliced using solvents during negative assembly, while polyester film can only be spliced using adhesive tape patches or ultrasonically, both of which leave visible marks in the frame area. Also, polyester film is so strong, it will not break under tension and may cause serious damage to expensive camera or projector mechanisms in the event of a film jam, whereas triacetate film breaks easily, reducing the risk of damage. Many were opposed to the use of polyester for release prints for precisely this reason, and because ultrasonic splicers are very expensive items, beyond the budgets of many smaller theaters. In practice, though, this has not proved to be as much of a problem as was feared. Rather, with the increased use of automated long-play systems in cinemas, the greater strength of polyester has been a significant advantage in lessening the risk of a film performance being interrupted by a film break. Despite its self-oxidizing hazards, nitrate is still regarded highly as the stock is more transparent than replacement stocks, and older films used denser silver in the emulsion. The combination results in a notably more luminous image with a high contrast ratio. Other uses A nitrocellulose slide, nitrocellulose membrane, or nitrocellulose paper is a sticky membrane used for immobilizing nucleic acids in southern blots and northern blots. It is also used for immobilization of proteins in western blots and atomic force microscopy for its nonspecific affinity for amino acids. Nitrocellulose is widely used as support in diagnostic tests where antigen antibody binding occurs, e.g., pregnancy tests. U albumin tests and CRP. Glycine and chloride ions make protein transfer more efficient. In 1846, nitrate cellulose was found to be soluble in ether and alcohol. The solution was named collodion and was soon used as a dressing for wounds. It is still in use today in topical skin applications, such as liquid skin and in the application of salicylic acid, the active ingredient in compound W wart remover. Adolf No developed a method of peeling coal balls using nitrocellulose. In 1851, Frederick Scott Archer invented the wet collodion process as a replacement for albumin in early photographic emulsions, binding light-sensitive silver halides to a glass plate. Magicians' flash papers are sheets of paper or cloth made from nitrocellulose, which burn almost instantly with a bright flash, leaving no ash. As a medium for cryptographic one-time pads, they make the disposal of the pad complete, secure, and efficient. Radon tests for alpha track etches use it. For space flight, nitrocellulose was used by Copenhagen suborbitals on several missions as a means of jettisoning components of the rocket-slash-space capsule and deploying recovery systems. However, after several missions and flights, it proved not to have the desired explosive properties in a near-vacuum environment. Nitrocellulose lacquer was used as a finish on guitars and saxophones for most of the 20th century and is still used on some current applications. Manufactured by, among others, DuPont, the paint was also used on automobiles sharing the same color codes as many guitars including Fender and Gibson brands, although it fell out of favor for a number of reasons, pollution, and the way the lacquer yellows and cracks over time. Nitrocellulose lacquer was also used as an aircraft dope, painted onto fabric-covered aircraft to tighten and provide protection to the material, but has been largely superseded by alternative cellulosics and other materials. It is used to coat playing cards and to hold staples together in office staplers. Nail polish is made from nitrocellulose lacquer as it is inexpensive, dries quickly, and is not damaging to skin. Nitrocellulose lacquer is spin-coated onto aluminum or glass discs, then a groove is cut with a lathe, to make one-off phonograph records, used as masters for pressing or for play in dance clubs. They are referred to as acetate discs. Depending on the manufacturing process, nitrocellulose is esterified to varying degrees. Table tennis balls, guitar picks, and some photographic films have fairly low esterification levels and burn comparatively slowly with some charred residue. Gun cotton, dissolved at about 25% in acetone, forms a lacquer used in preliminary stages of wood finishing to develop a hard finish with a deep luster. It is normally the first coat applied, 
sanded and followed by other coatings that bond to it. Because of its explosive nature, not all applications of nitrocellulose were successful. In 1869, with elephants having been poached to near extinction, the billiards industry offered a 10,000 US dollar prize to whomever came up with the best replacement for ivory billiard balls. John Wesley Hyatt created the winning replacement, which he created with a new material he invented called camphored nitrocellulose the first thermoplastic, better known as celluloid. The invention enjoyed a brief popularity, but the Hyatt balls were extremely flammable, and sometimes portions of the outer shell would explode upon impact. An owner of a billiard saloon in Colorado wrote to Hyatt about the explosive tendencies, saying that he did not mind very much personally but for the fact that every man in his saloon immediately pulled a gun at the sound. The process used by Hyatt to manufacture the billiard balls, patented in 1881, involved placing the mass of nitrocellulose in a rubber bag, which was then placed in a cylinder of liquid and heated. Pressure was applied to the liquid in the cylinder, which resulted in a uniform compression on the nitrocellulose mass, compressing it into a uniform sphere as the heat vaporized the solvents. The ball was then cooled and turned to make a uniform sphere. In light of the explosive results, this process was called the Hyatt gun method. Hazards Collodion, a solution of nitrocellulose in ether and ethanol, is a flammable liquid. When dry, nitrocellulose is explosive and can be ignited with heat, spark, or friction. An overheated container of dry nitrocellulose is believed to be the initial cause of the 2015 Tianjin explosions. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.